You want to a life transforming experience as Pastor Prince Abbott brings you God's word with deep insight and power. God bless you. Increasing your capacity. We are on this Insights for Exploit series. It started on Wednesday. Those of you who were here, you know what happened. It was explosive. I dealt on a topic titled Lessons from the Prodigal Son. Go and get that tape. If I were you, you'll get it. The tape is available. Just go and collect it from the media guys. Free of charge. You don't even need to pay. That's my heart for you. I've made these things free. In the school we were yesterday, one um, senior lawyer stood up and said, Sir, lecturer, I want to find out how come all the lawyers in Airborne State, not up to 1% or even half, is attending this school. The school was majorly attended by people who are not from here. Yes, 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 yes. Because we don't like information. We don't like knowledge. Anywhere we see, we run away. Any church that is knowledge-based, we run. I saw somebody who posted something on Facebook, a man of God or whatever. Okay, he has a message for Matic. Then uh, he came back with it. I saw his team. They came back from a journey or whatever. And then I was seeing him on Facebook. I looked at the young guy. I said, yes, this is the type they will patronize because he honor Abu Amuma because he's prophesying. You're wearing a black pants. Your this thing is like this. You're, that's where Igbos are running to. That's the one, the calm man of God. That's the papa. Anyone that teaches you, that trains you, that feeds you the word, this man is not storytelling we came for. But you don't know that the Bible calls Jesus the wisdom and the power. There is the power dimension. And the secret to carrying the power is to knowing the word. So when people come and be doing all this, they are acrobatic in the name of their producing miracles. That's why people don't give attention to the Bible. People don't give attention to the word of God again because they think there's a sharp, sharp, sharp root to get in there. Everywhere you go in town, you see so-called prayer house here and there, confusing people's destinies. And then you go, you see young, young men and women who will not go and spend time. You think God calls pastors, native doctors, or magicians. Look at this, your Bible, how big it is. To tell you how big your work is. You don't read your Bible, you don't know it. Yet you want God to provide miracles. Then why did God write the Bible? Why did God inspire men to write the Bible? If the Bible was not important, why was it given? People don't value training. That's why lawyers are trekking in your city. It's a shame. After reading five year law course, go for one year law school, go for one year youth service, seven solid years, all you came out to do after call to bar is to trek. And you find them so much in this part of, part of the world, trekking from my 50 to court. Now look at the professional training like that. Me, who is not a lawyer, enrolled in it. See materials. Is this one not the rule of law? I'm studying. See material. The rule of law, governance, dispute resolution, and contemporary legal issues in Nigeria. Somebody who is not a law student, see what I'm reading. And I know these things, and I'm beating. Look at materials. Alternative dispute resolution. And then there are crazy ones. If I open this file, you see it's materials, the cost models inside. And I sat down there. Where are the lawyers in the city? Is outside who came to take the training. And then one of the men was complaining. And I stood up and I said, my dear, it's not only in, I thought it was even in just the church this thing is happening. I didn't know it was happening in your people's field. I said, oh, so it's a syndrome in the whole city. So we put up this building or what do you call it insight for exploits to show you that life has secrets and principles that governs it if you want success you have to know the secret of success you want greatness you have to know the secret of greatness you want to make it in life you have to know the secrets for making it and last wednesday i dealt on the issue of lessons from the prodigal son now i've said it to you go and collect it free some of you won't collect we put a price on the 
tapes before we found that people couldn't buy i now said okay to tell them i'm not interested in their money remove all the money give them the tapes free there are people who will still not get it is this how you want your life to end that there are men in this life who will be going up and up flying in jets People who will be building skyscrapers. People who will be having successful families. Having successful businesses. And then you have vowed in your life you will not be one amongst them. Is this how you want your life to end? Is this how you want to be? Settle for small. You think you already know. Then you can speak English. It's not a sign that you are, you are knowledgeable. Literacy is no longer ability to read and write. A man who cannot read and write English but can read and write Igbo can be wiser than you who knows English. Think intellectualism. There's a new program I'm designing for educational system on the five educational programs to incorporate in our school system. I am designing it presently. The five educational programs to incorporate in educational system. If you incorporate it, then you have moved this rubbish we are doing called school to another level. I've written it. I've drafted the whole codes, the structure, how it's going to run and all that. Because they just go and mold one part of you in the school and they leave other ones dead. So I've added five new programs. If you put people through the process, they will come out able to do anything with their life. What shocks me is that the people who are causing the mess in our present day society are the ones who went to school. That's what is shocking me. The ones who went to university are the ones who are, who are like people without hope. They're the ones disgusting me. Lawyers. PSC holders. Some masters. You see a lot of other men on, in town, you'll be shocked. They are BSC holders. Or Kada men. There are some you see, they carry you. Just engage them in English, you'll be shocked. They speak better than you. There are some Keke men, they speak better than you. Some are selling newspaper at the roundabout. The guy read mass communication just to come and sell newspaper for somebody. Sell son newspaper. That's where his life has come to. Because you don't know the secret of life. The labor of a fool will rate him because he does not know how to go into the city. You are in school laboring, reading, writing, doing all kinds of whatever, training, um, taking lectures and taking courses. But at the same time, you finish, you are laboring. He tells you there is something more to go into that thing called school. At the end of the day, you are out. You are looking for which pastor. Pastor, pray. Bind. My de- the demons in my village are plenty. Which demons? Church should be a balanced institution. Not just a place where you come to and everybody is watching the prophets dance around. Watching the prophet prophesy. There is a side of prophecy. There is a side. Actually, prophecy is even in twofold. There is foretelling and foretelling. Foretelling is all those ones you hear people always talking. Hey, hey, there's somebody here. Is your name this? Can't you see how caricature that thing has made the church look? That people are bombarding the church. All the freeze and all of them are on social media. Firing the church. is because the church reduced themselves to an object of laughter. When you talk of knowledge, no knowledge. Wisdom, no wisdom. Capacity, no capacity. People who don't have value for tapes, don't have value for books, don't have value for reading, don't have value for all those things. Because that's what we are presented to the world. That we are a valueless organization. We just do things anyhow. We dance anyhow. We worship anyhow. We are careless. We dress anyhow. We always, uh, God, do good. Do something new. Every time, do something new. And God has done everything. Waiting for you to do something. And then you are busy crying. And then you are looking at church people as, oh God, it's disgusting. The church put herself in this position. And then I know so many of you who are struggling to come out of it. You are struggling. It's taking you years. You, you, you seem not to be able to know where we are, do, what we are taking this thing. Where we are taking this thing to. There's a struggle. Because this is what your life has been used to all the years. Orthodox. Religion. That's all you've ever known. Mass. That's all you've ever known. Block rosary. That's what you, they, they taught you only. Nothing beyond that. See how your life is blocked. 
I put up this series to see if we can expose certain truths to you on how life works. A man is doing better than you is not a secret. He knows something you don't know. He knows something you don't know. He does something you don't do. It's as simple as A, B, C, D. When I finish preaching now and drop this mic, I'm going into my office. I have exams to take. And the exam is meant to last for one hour. And there are how many courses to write. So, I'll finish the exam. I'll take it to Abuja. I'll mark it there. Bring, publish the scores on the net. And I'm writing in a course. And I'll beat the people who are practicing in it. Yes. And yet I'm still strong. One week of intensive drilling. Even a justice was telling me this morning. He said, their drilling can, it can, it can frustrate. A justice of the appeal court told me that this morning. He said, the thing is, fr- he said, it can frustrate you. If you are not careful, you will collapse in that class. You sit down there from morning like that, you will see night entering your, your eyes. And they are still talking. Nobody is asking whether you are. They are drilling, drilling. And then, it's not the, the kind of school you go to. This one is a different thing. As in, I, I give my heart, I doff my cap for that institute. They are something else. You know anything I celebrate, go and check it. Why am I doing that? Because I know this life belongs to people who know. This life belongs to people who have the secrets in their hand. There's a way you can do ministry and succeed. There's a way you can do business and succeed. There's a way you can live your life and make progress. And then tell them, go for it. They will not. Well, it's not their business. They're talking too much. They're talking too much. Meanwhile, pain is designed to be, or what you call training is designed to be painful. No real drilling is sweet. Drilling is painful. If you fear failure, you will pay the price for success. Get the tapes if you want. If you don't want, we're not bothered. I remove the fees from the tapes so you know I don't feed from there. So even if you don't get the tape, now it's free. It still will not subtract anything from me. It's your own life. It's discounting. Get the tapes. Listen to it. Share it with people around you. Help other people succeed. But what does it take? Just put your phone. Go to the media. Please, give me that tape. Lessons from the prodigal son. Pastor said I should. You see, 12 outstanding lessons I picked from a scripture that can simplify your life. Some of you are making the mistake that fool made. But you go and learn the lesson. Somebody has discovered it and he has shown you it's not your business. Repeat your father's success. It's your own problem. It's not my own problem. If you see me and see my father, you know that I switched to be who I am now. Increasing your capacity. Let's take the part one. There's no time so we can leave. Now, see this scripture. Enlarge the place of your tent. And let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. This is God talking. Okay, let me read the next verse. He said, for you shall expand. What is now the secret for expansion? Go to the next verse. Sorry, the verse 2. He said, for you shall. That for you shall expand is a follow up to the first thing. He said, enlarge. This year has been declared or was declared the year of what? Enlargement and what? Can, I, can we equate what and what? Enlargement and expansion. Enlargement talks about capacity building. There is no expansion without enlargement. There is no expansion without enlargement. God said, enlarge the place of your tent. Tent building. Container can be tent. 
Anything that contains a thing is called tent. For instance, this is a building. You can call it tent. It's containing people. If this building can take 500, if you try to squeeze in 1,000 here, you have broken a major order. If you can take 1,000, you try to squeeze in 5,000 here, you will kill people here because the capacity for 5,000 is not here. But now, if you want to contain 5,000 here, what do you do? You have to break this old tent, break this old capacity, and then enlarge it. So what do, maybe we have to pull out the pillars and remove some of the blocks and then that empty space outside, go and draw another map or another plan and add it, connect it to this one. Then you have increased the capacity of the building. That's what the Bible says here. He said, enlarge the place of your tents. Enlarge it. This present one. And then, he did not say, build the place of your tent. He said, enlarge. That means there's an existing tent already. There's an existing tent already. There's an existing tent already. But now, that thing you are praying to God for, God, I want this breakthrough. I want church growth. I want business exploit. I want career success. I want this success. I want that one. I want this one. God is saying, the answer to it is this current tent you are praying in. Break it. Destroy this current mode. And enlarge it. Enlarge the place of your tent. Because God cannot release any breakthrough until your capacity for that breakthrough has been enlarged. So people who were born in this city who have never left this city for one day. If you ever traveled, it's just to Anambra for holiday. Your uncle's place. And then you are still okay. Hey, yo. You see them all around. I think they brought life for them here. I was coming from my house. I saw two big bottles, balloon bottles, at Water Works, side by side. You will jam yourself there this evening. That's what they want. To impress David. Maybe it's David they are bringing for you. Or whiskey. Okay. Everybody say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you finish saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the guy's account is calling with billions here, yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you don't finish, collect the money you used to buy a ticket and go and buy his girlfriend, 45 million naira Porsche. And then your head has not correct yet. Foolish will make wise will rich. The capital you pay for being foolish is the wealth of the people you are watching. The cost you pay for being foolish is the time you spend watching other people who are already where they are supposed to be. Where you should have been. Going through the process and then tilling the ground so you can become the next celebrity, the next star. What time do I have to go and be watching the video? Or watching... Nigerians have a reputation for stupidity. I've never heard anything like British bets. American bets. Even Ghana bets I've not heard. It's only Niger that has a betting scheme. And the people go there and waste their time betting for people who are earning thousands, hundreds of thousands of pounds a week. You use your hard-earned 100 naira to buy sports newspaper to read something you know nothing about. You spend your time watching football. People who have already paid their dues. Like that, my friend. I pay my dues. I deserve some accolade. I deserve some accolade. I paid my dues. And you paid it in full. <laughs> you think whiskey waste his time? When they come out and see all those fans, they just come out and excite them. When they finish, they enter their convoy. You won't see them again. Back to studio. And that's where they are. With few persons. Few. One or two persons. Walking out the next track. Then they launch a pian market. See crowd. Makes you lose your crown. You see crowd. Don't know. If you don't exit from it. You lose your place in destiny. Enlarge the place of your tent. And then. And let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Your current habitation. Stretch out the curtains. Do not spare. That means there is no limit to which you can build capacity. There is no limit to which you can build capacity. He said do not spare. 
hold nothing back when it comes to training, when it comes to building, when it comes to development. He said, do not spare. When you see ICANN, go and collect ICANN. We'll soon, we'll soon come to that. You see a chapter course, go and collect the training in it. That's a push training in church. You're hungry. Go and get that training. That training is going to solve you many years of hunger waiting for you in the future. Are you not hungry now? Are you not correctly hungry? So what do you stand to lose if you lose this hunger so you can gain food tomorrow by just going through training? Some of you are hiding under the guise of your suits. There's no shingbind anywhere. I'm not impressed when you wear fine suits and go and snap on somebody's jeepo and put on your Facebook. That's stupidity. I don't do it. It's not your car. Even if you're believing God for one, just snap it in your heart. Don't put it on your Facebook. Then you trek down to church. Snap with your own car. If you're believing God for a new car, you see a car, celebrate it. You snap the outside. Enter inside and snap. Let's see. If it's your own, enter. Stop lying on Facebook. If it's your car, we will see you driving it and snapping. Leave people's car alone. Get aggressive inside and get all the training you need to become owners of cars and owner of cars and strengthen your stakes. Now, see what happens. Verse 3. For you shall expand to the right and to the left. You now see a man who has, when you see me expanding to the UK, expanding to the US, expanding to India, expanding to Asia, this is what happened. The first thing, you shall expand to the right and to the left and to, and your descendants will inherit the nations. It's not for people without the first one. You need the first verse to get the descendant. You see what I'm doing with you guys, with Priestine Hughes. When I discipline some of you, you don't understand. You think this man is just his temperament to be firing us. No. It's because of my capacity. I'm looking for descendants who would build to inherit the earth. So when you do one small thing, I fire you on it. One small thing. It's because I've grown inside to a point where you, you can't take me on away in anything you do. I see mediocrity. I call it what it is. You can't take me on away in anything you do. I see, I see what you call it. Foolishness. I call it what it is. I see laziness. I can spot it. Why? It's my cap. So I'm building you to contain what I've already built. And make the desolate cities inhabited. Look at it. The descendants we hear. Verse 4. Do not fear, for you will not be ashamed, neither be disgraced, for you will not be put to shame, for you will forget the shame of your youth and will not remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore. If you want, after living through, passing through this, your youthful age, you get to that stage of your life where you watch your children doing great exploits. You don't play with your youthfulness. You don't play with this your age. This, this era of your life is the most important phase of your life. It's the morning phase of your life. If you miss your morning, you will have a lot of battles to contain in life. He said you forget the shame of your youth. How do you forget the shame of your youth? By paying the price you should pay now. There are things you don't have currently. If you pay the price, by the time you are aging in life, you look back and see those days of scarcity. Those days you were trekking. Those days you were borrowing money. Those days you were wearing one shirt. Those days you didn't have money to take transport to church. You will look back and all those things will become ah, something that is written off. You will forget the shame of your youth because you have paid the dues in your youth. And now that you are older, you are living in plenty. But the truth of the matter is that the produce and the goodies starts coming even in your youth. I'm a young man. I'm enjoying the thing now. 
when my pastor just celebrated his 50th birthday, somebody told me, oh my God, sir, I just calculated to check how many more years you have before you get to his age. I can only imagine what you would do. It's an advantage to wake up early. Hey, you didn't hear what I said. I say it's an advantage to do what? Wake up early. Yes, yes, yes. 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 See, we wake up late. Check them. Check them. You see the way their day go. It's nothing you can do that day. It's an advantage to be on time. There are a lot of things you would, you would not be party to. Disaster you would not be party to if you are early for a meeting. You have an exam now by 9 o'clock and you are seated in the class by exactly 8 o'clock. If there are instructions that will come for that paper, you get them. If that paper is going to be cancelled or moved to another time, you will get it. The ones who come in late, if they shift the venue of that exam, you will know the venue. Even when you finally know the venue, you'll be running out of scatter to look for it. And they will not run out of scatter to balance and relax and write the exam. You see the danger of lateness. It was lateness that cost Safira her life. And Aeneas had already died for telling the Holy Ghost a lie. If she came early, because the man would be the first to talk as the head of the family. As she saw the husband die, she would have told the truth. Because she came late, the husband told a lie, and that, imagine the time she was wasting doing makeup. A man told a lie, died. Imagine the time from when he died to when they carried him outside. Imagine the time from when they kept him on the ground, and imagine the time they took to dig six feet. Imagine the time people spent to cry. Imagine the time they spent to put him inside the ground, and then they do all the burial ceremony uh, scripture reading and all that and then the pastor bless the grave pray for the uh, daily departed and then put him inside the ground and then they cover the grave imagine the time it would have taken to do all that she's still in the house doing makeup you think to do better is one minute she's still in the house doing makeup and they bury the man people now enter church they have finished crying they have now cleaned their face and pastor said preach another message and people are now laughing. That means they have forgotten the dead. Imagine the time that took. The woman is in the house wearing her shoe. And finally comes. And then there is no sign in the atmosphere that shows that anybody was buried. And she told the same lie and died. The price you pay for waking up late. That's the price you pay for waking up late. There are some lessons I'll show you, some biblical cases, you know, case studies I'll show you on this issue of capacity. I'll show you some contemporary, then I'll show you how to increase capacity, and then we're out of this place. Give me Second Kings chapter 4, verse 1 to 6, a story you know. God cannot do anything with you until you enlarge your coast. It's not him that does it, it's you who do it. He's only to supply what is commensurate to the size of your coast. Second Kings chapter 1. If we are together, let me say, I hear. Mm. If you are sleeping, don't forget the door is open. These are not times we beg people. If your offering is one million, we can be begging you. Every Sunday, you give us one million. We'll be begging you. They don't come to church. I'll come to your house. Yes. Now you're giving five naira, 20 naira in church, and then you miss services. So they'll call you on the phone. It's your offering up to the credit I used to call you. Now we check everything in VAT, value added tax. So what, what value does your leaving the church have for me? When I know at the end of the day, you drop 50 naira as offering. And you want to go see the door, usher, pose well, so you can open. Anyone who wants to go, don't stop. Let them use the door. If I have to preach this thing I'm preaching in the US, they will pay me consultancy fee. It's only in South East. They are doing most of a pastor. In the West, people are still in church by now. They attend the first service, second service, third service, fourth service, five service. They are still there. Learning. In Lagos here. Yeah. And here, when pastor waste more time. Man, be as a church. I was, uh, because, go, you have a problem. Your offering is spoiling the offering box. That's why the offering doesn't. I see your offering is one million. You don't come to church. I will drop microphone here. I'll go and pull you from your house. Put you in my car. And bring you to church. I say, sit down there. Don't listen to the word. If you want to sleep, sleep. Or give us offering. 
Amen. As so though you bought the fuel we are using to power the gen. It's not gen, it's lister. Mikanona. You know what is burning inside there? And when you finish, you collect five kobo. Piam is offering boss. Say, Jehovah is your name. But fuel is burning. And you are cooling, chilling. Open the door. <laughs> Before we give offering, we'll check your offering today. What is it? Now, look, 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 look at this, this story. You know it very well. Chapter 4, verse 1. A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, saying, saying what? He said, your, descent, your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord and the creditor is coming to take two sons of mine to, his, to be his slaves. See a problem? There's two. Just follow the story. I can't explain all this. So Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in thy house? What do you have in your house? He said, and she said, your maid servant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Go down. Then she said, then he said, go borrow vessels from everywhere. Another translation says, go borrow vessels, not a few. Not a few. Not a few. That means there is no limit to which the resources of heaven can contain as long as you can build your capacity. Heaven has no scarcity of resources, only scarcity of sources. Only scarcity of containers. Heaven does not have scarcity of resources. There are only scarcity of containers. Limited containers limit God's supply. So you see, Elisha said, go and borrow vessels. He said, go borrow vessels from everywhere. From all your neighbors, empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. Are you seeing that? Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? There's a message I did on this. What's the title of this message? I talked on what to do when you are in crisis. Go and get the tape and listen to it. I did an exposition on this subject. I won't talk that again. Verse 4. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons. Then pour it into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. Remember, all she had was just a small olive oil. But now, what she has is not as important as what she needs to build within the capacity. Small can become big when you have the right capacity. So, Elijah's problem was not what she has. Elijah's problem was what she doesn't have. He said, when it gets full, set aside the full ones. The next one, yes? Quickly, please, just keep moving. So, she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured it out. Now, it came to pass, when the vessels were full, the vessels were full. Follow me. That she said to her son, bring me another what? And he said to her, there is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Somebody didn't get that. He said, there is not another vessel. The moment God found out that no vessel was remaining. He ceased supply. So you now see that God cannot answer your prayer. God cannot answer your prayer. That your prayer. That your praying and opening your mouth. Shouting up and down. Doesn't mean God is obligated to answer your prayers. Whenever you pray to heaven, heaven checks your capacity. John. He said, there is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Why did it cease? Because God does not waste any resource. He blesses to the extent of your capacity. That is why Dangote is blessed. It's not religion, inclination that makes you a blessed man. It's the principles you obey. The 
oil dried. Not because heaven now got shortage of oil. Because there was shortage of vessel. And not that scripture I'll give you. John chapter 2 verse 1. A scripture I'm sure you know. Okay, before John chapter 2, give me Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5, verse 1. So it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God that he stood by the lake of Genseret and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Yes. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. Where are my apples? Let me have them. Open it, drop the three of them on this table here. Be fast. When he stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Follow what I'm saying, no? But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toyed. You see the wahala you have? You are always toiling. You don't want to build capacity. We have toyed. We have struggled. We have labored. We have worked hard. And hard work hardly works. We have tried every technique possible. And still got nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. Now, I want to show you something very fascinating. fascinating. Jesus didn't catch the fish. He just devised the strategy out of capacity. And he gave him the mathematics for catching nets. What was the mathematics he gave him? He said, see, the reason you have not caught anything all night is because you have been launching one net. And there are many fishes inside a river who see your net and they refuse to enter. Why? Because when they look at your net in their mind, why is this guy insulting us? See how small his net is. And you want to catch me with that thing. It's an insult. Take that net away. Not be, no, the question is, where did the fish come from? I'll show you something. He said, take that net away. See how small his net is. Tilapia will turn to waves and say, where will you enter that thing? He said, I'm even bigger than the net. I can't even enter. The net is even, I'm bigger than it. So what are you talking about? Tilapia will look and want all his children. Say, any of you are catching that net, you see something. And Peter will cast the net again. The thing will not follow. He will cast. It will follow. It will come. Jesus saw it and said, let me tell you why you have been toiling. See verse 4. When he had stopped speaking, he said, that's Jesus said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets. Plural. Peter, stop using one. But Peter was too used with the, with the usual and he could not be used for the unusual. He was too traditional and he could not become transitional. He was too mundane. Status quo is the enemies of status flux. Tradition is the enemy of transition. When you are too used with the formal, you cannot be used for the informal. God wants your life to be informal. When people look at your life, they can't explain you. That's informality. Now, see what Peter did because he was too used with the usual. Verse 5. Jesus says, nets you should throw. Peter said, hey, Master, we have toyed all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. One. And because Jesus is Lord of all, the fish have to obey. Because it's Jesus who is speaking. The fish has no option. They have to come. Peter was throwing the nets. They couldn't come. Now Jesus was going. They have to come. But now the same problem shows up. The same thing the fishes were complaining about shows up. Let me show you how it shows up. The next verse, five, the verse 6. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. Their net was what? Breaking. <laughs> Hello? Do you know the consequence of that? You catch fish, your net start breaking. What is the implication? 
the fishes that I entered exceeded the capacity of the net. So the net started breaking. As a result of the breakage, there must have been some losses. So there are fishes that entered. As the team broke, some fishes went back to sea. Then because the net was already saturated with fish, there were other fishes that had the command of Jesus that wanted to enter but could not enter. God does not want to give you a net breaking harvest and a bone sinking harvest. God wants to give you a harvest commensurate your capacity. Because if your harvest breaks, you will lose you will lose things. You will lose things. He said the net began to break. Because he said I will throw in the nets, not the nets. Can I show you another scripture to back up some of these claims? John chapter 2, verse 1. Quickly. There's a story about Jesus. You know very well. Quickly, sir. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Quickly. Now, both Jesus and disciples were invited to the wedding. Mm -hmm. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. Yes? Jesus said to her, Woman, what does, your cons- what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. See the next verse. His mother said to the servant, Whatever he says to you, do it. The mother had observed the son from when he was growing up. She must have known this guy has a solution to this problem. Even when Jesus was hiding, the mother knew. He has a solution to this problem. The mother knew. He said, what do you have with me? The mother went and told his disciples, against his wish, so whatever the guy said, I want to do. Make want to do. No, no, it's in the talk. He knows the pro- secret to this problem. And she went away. Jesus looked at the woman and said, hey, this woman wants to expose me. Oh, oh voila. He said, hey, Piro, where are you? Come. Go to the next verse. Now, there were set there six water pots. Of stone, according to the manner of purification of the Jews, containing 20 or 30 gallons a piece. Can you imagine? I won't explain that first of time. Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water. He didn't say put it half. He said, fill it. They are empty. Fill it up. Fill it up. How can you be asking for wine when your capacity is empty? You have imbued, naturally imbued capacity. You have not filled it up. He said, fill it up. Fill it up. Some of you have capacity for nations. He said, fill it up. You have capacity for campuses. He said, fill it up. Give me back my scripture. He said, fill it up. You can do amazing things if you only will give attention to the things you should give attention to. Fill it up. He said, fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. Do you see that in your Bible? Look at your Bible. He said, they filled it up to what? The brim. Hi, I love Jesus. If you know this man, stop crying to God. God, give me a back click. Give me a back click. It doesn't come like that. Whatever you want to take, you must put inside. Put inside of you. He said, fill it up. And they filled it up to brim. And that word is they filled it up to capacity. Look at verse 8. And he said unto them, Draw out now. Hello. If you want to take a back click, put a back click inside of you. Where to take a back click is not in a back click, it's inside you. He said, after filling it, go back to the same pot you filled up and draw. And he said to them, draw some out now. The first is fill up. You cannot draw from access bank money you didn't put in there. If you go to do that, you are a thief. If you want to draw 10k from access, go and put the 10k. If you don't have 10k, maybe it's 5k that's your balance. You go to the ATM and you tell the ATM, pam, 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 10k. The ATM will respond to you expressly with the length of his tongue. You do not have sufficient balance. 
God, give me that car. Give me that car. God checks your account inside. You do not have the car inside. God, I want one million. One million. It checks. Insufficient balance inside. Then you now declare war on the witches in your village. Transfer of aggression. They are not your problem. You just transfer aggression on demons who are not looking for you. Because of frustration. Jesus filled his capacity. He built the team. He filled it up. And he said, go and draw from there. No wonder the Bible says, out of your belly shall flow. It is not out of whatever. It is from within you. You want to take Nigeria. Hey, look. Where am I building Nigeria? Not in Nigeria. Inside me. I'm developing Nigeria inside me. The new Nigeria I want to see is building from within me. I'm this. I'm pregnant with the values for the new Nigeria. I'm pregnant with the structures for the new Nigeria. What I will institute in this nation is what I've instituted in myself. Somebody saw what I'm saying. I say anything I want to, for instance, check families that are failing. Families that are breaking down. Go and check the couples. They have not put in the values, the principles, and the systems for building homes. If you put loving husband inside you, you give your wife husband loving wife. If you put submissive wife inside you, you give your husband submissive wife. It's from inside you. The values emanate. And he said to them, draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. Verse. When the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and did not know where it came from, but servants who had drawn the water knew. The master of the feast or the bridegroom. The rest is story. I won't read that one because of time. Somebody is about to cruise into another level of capacity. Another level of capacity. When I see your governors, I don't see them as the one with the solution to Nigeria's problem. I am building capacity. Capacity to talk to governors. My problem is not my problem. My problem is me. Your problem is not your problem. Your problem is you. Q-E-D. Why am I going through this? Why am I going through this? Why, why won't you go through it? When you have refused to go through capacity building. <laughs> Holy Spirit of God. John chapter 6 verse 1. Give you biblical case studies. You go and study them at home. John chapter 6 verse 1. Can you be fast? After these things, Jesus went over the sea of Galilee, which is the sea of Tiberias. You know why I'm reading these things? So you can begin to appreciate the need. You can begin to appreciate the need to see that even the man you call Jesus operated this principle. Oh, can I get hot with you right now? He said, then a great multitude followed him because they saw his signs which he performed on those who were diseased. Uh-huh. Keep going. And Jesus went up on the mountain and there he sat with his disciples. Read again down. Now the Passover of the feast of the Jews was near. Yes, go down. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes and seen a great multitude coming toward him. He said to Philip, where shall we buy bread that this may eat? <laughs> There's a contrast I will show you. Then Jesus lifted up. No. Where shall we buy bread that this may eat? But this he said to test him. For he himself knew what to do. A crowd of 5,000 people, even his lieutenants came. <laughs> Please send them away. They're hungry. Oh. Jesus said, where can we buy bread to feed the people? He said, there's no place. Oh. Jesus kept quiet. I was looking at him. He said, for him himself knew what to do. Sometimes I give some of you assignment. You think I'm helpless about it. I already know the answer before I gave you the problem. to solve. That's why you don't eat. Have you ever seen me stranded? No way. I tell you now, let's get money and get something done. You're the one sluggishly going back. You think, I don't know. You will be there like that. I'll get it done. When I give you something to go and repair, it's not because I don't have the money to, give, to repair it. 
I'm putting your capacity to test. How much is the stuff? 8,000. I'll keep quiet. I won't talk. I'll sit down. I'll watch to see what you do. You don't do it. The following day is done. And in most cases, not even with money. But it's done. There are witnesses. Sometimes they'll come, crack their head, pass or this, this. I say, okay, enter the car. Piam, that same spot. Piam, piam, piam. It's done. They'll be looking at me. I say, it's capacity. A leader must build capacity for problem solving. If you do not have what it takes to solve problems, stop leading people. Stop talking to people. Why am I confident talking to you? I have what it takes to alter your life. Now move it to the next level. He said, but this is said to test them. Philip answered him, 200 dinary, what of bread is not sufficient for them? That every one of them may have a little. So even if we buy, you know, they had money even to buy bread. But there was no place to buy. He said, even if we buy, see, these people, it's not even, even if we share a bit, give them in bits, it will not be enough. That every one of them may get little. Yes, go down, verse 8. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simeon, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, go down, there is a lad here who has five. Everybody said five. That's one, two, three, four, five. Not five million, five. You have a church of five people, you are powerful. You, you don't just know it. It's your capacity that has limited you there. You have a cell of five people. You are powerful. Your lack of capacity has kept you there. You have a campus fellowship with five people. Powerful! If you know the miracle you can do, if you understand capacity beauty techniques, look at He said, There is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small, not big, small fingerlings. Two small fishes. But what are they among so many? That's how poor men see things. They see small resources as small resources. People with a large capacity see small resources containing big resources. The man already saw small and described it as small. But Jesus was seen differently. See verse 10. Then Jesus said, make the people sit down. Kai. Can I explain that? He said, make them do what? Sit down. Because nothing grows in disorder. He said, then Jesus said, make the people sit down. What does it mean? It means nothing grows in an atmosphere of disorder. I have small five loaves of bread and two fishes. But for this thing to grow, you must engage the power of planning. You have a church of five people bringing systems into that church. Bringing goal setting. Five people. You, this week, bring two people to church. You, this week, bring two people to church. You, this week, bring two people. Show them the strategy. The five, go out and bring two to. Church has grown. Five times how many? Two, two. How much is that? No. No. If I bring one, this one, bring one, this one, that's what? That's 10. If we bring two, 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 that's how many? Is that 15? Church has grown. Teaching them, church has grown. When necessary, think. Banquet. Do I do banquet? Do one banquet. It attracts them. Discipleship follows from there. Your church attracts MVPs. They come and you just tell them, welcome to pray, still heals. They will hear your fine song, eat your fine rice, go home. They won't come the next Sunday because people don't come to church like that. They don't say in church like that. Where's your follow-up system? Where's your visitation system? Where's your love and care system? Where's your prayer system? You want church to grow. You don't pray for the growth of the church. You don't do follow-up. You don't do visitation. You don't do care. You don't do love. You don't do discipleship. Forget growth. Don't talk about it. Go and shut up. See Jesus. He said, make the people. It is not let the people sit down. He said, make them. That means they don't want to sit down. They don't want what you are teaching. They don't want the system. They think it's hard work. But please, make them. If this work is going to succeed, make the people. Ah, yes. Somebody's not here. I'm saying, make the people. Jesus always knows the secret. Follow me and I will make you. Make the people sit down. Make the people 
rebuilds the people, then puts order. Sit down. Make the people sit down. Hey, 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 can I show you another scripture to back up this thing? Do you know that Jesus did not just have the people see that he broke them into fragments? Can I show you? Luke chapter 9, verse 13 to 17. The same story. I want to show you where I put up that one for from. Luke chapter 9, verse 13 to 17. Are you there? But he said to them, You give them something to eat. And they said, We have no more than five loaves and two fishes. Unless we go and buy food for all these people. See verse 14. For there were about 5,000 men. Then he said to his disciples, Make them sit down in groups of 50. Somebody is not hearing what I'm saying. He said, Let the people make them sit down. That means take the 5,000 people and break them down into fragments, cell group. You want to multiply their bread? Break, put order. Break them down into 50. If not, there will be stampede. If not, the food will not go around. If not, there are some who collect, who will collect then. So group them into manageable fragments. So that as they are 50 50, as we are giving to the leader, we just count 50 and give. We count 50 and give this. Leader. We count 50. We know everybody is sitting in 50s. But if the whole 5,000 people are standing, we don't know exactly how much we want to produce. Mm. He said, let them sit down. Make them sit down. Make them sit down. And then he multiplied. Look at the next verse. And they did so and made all sit down. Yes? Then he took the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven. Someone said, looking up to heaven. Now, after you have done your mathematics, that is when to call God. Oh, Lord, 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 Lord. You know not hear what I'm saying? Stop calling God to bless you when there's no capacity. He did not first of all call God. He looked within. Built his systems. Put goals and systems and structures. When he had designed all of that and put all the frameworks necessary in place. You know the next thing he did? He collected the small. He said, God, we have done what we can do. We have done training. We have studied. We have done the evangelism. We have done the soul winning. We have done the follow-up. I have invested the capital. I have started small. I have studied all the, the laws and principles of micro, you know, how to build a micro enterprise. Now I've started from where I am. Lord, I look up to heaven now. He said he blessed and did what? And broke them and gave them to the disciples to set before the multitude. That was where the miracle happened. Productivity is designed to happen where there's order. You see, capacity, these are principles of capacity I'm showing you. We'll deal on principles of capacity building on Wednesday. Today, I'm just going to show you how to increase capacity. Things that if you do not take note of, you can never build your capacity. We'll show you the principles on Wednesday. Now, look at this last scripture on this. Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 7. I think I've read that, you know. Let's leave that one. Let's leave that one. Hey man, can I show you two more case studies in the Bible of people you know? Noah and a man called David and his temple. That God, in talking to them about what to build, God showed them that you can't build that capacity. You can't. Some of you who are pastors in this church, you will build buildings now. Say we're about building one now. You see, you cannot. There's a capacity to build inside, to build it outside. Get to the book of Genesis. Quickly. No time wasting, please. Genesis chapter 6, verse 13. The story of Noah. Very interesting thing you will see. Some of you don't know the God you worship is a plan-oriented God. You have a family. How do you plan it? No witches are after you. You have a job. How do you plan it? You have a business. No matter how small it is, how do you plan it? 
you are a student. How do you plan your academics? And God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me. God was angry because people had sinned against him. So he wants to liquidate the whole earth, destroy everything. But God had a plan to start all over again. So now he gets into planning with Noah. He said, the end of the earth has come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark. See God specifying. Not just make yourself an ark. What do you want in life? Success. What are you talking about? No, we just laugh at you. See your God. I'm showing you God. Some of you. What do you want? Car? No, break it down. What kind of car? Range Rover. What model? Where do they sell it? How much is a car? When is it going to take you to buy the car? How long? How do you intend sourcing the money? If you know how you're going to source it, how do you break down the structure? If you don't have the money, how many people will give you the money to buy the car? 50 people. How much will they give you? Five, five, five hundred thousand naira. What do you need to do? Do you need to write a proposal to them or visit them? Talk to them. What do you do to get it done? So God said, make yourself an ark. He didn't stop there. What are you believing God for? Side business. No. Wrong prayer. Is that you pray and do not receive because you prayed and miss. Not because you didn't pray. You prayed, but I miss. OP. Off point. God, if you can only bless me with capital to start the business, I'll be grateful. God says, shut up. You must plan the business first before you talk to me. God, I have a business proposal. It's a business for establishing a poultry farm. It's going to cost me by my uh, business plan, my financial estimation is written uh, written at about uh, 1 million naira. God, I have as my source of raising money, family and friends. In the families, I have Uncle Emeka. I have Uncle Chidi. I have Barista so and so. Father, friends, you know, Tony is a very stingy guy, but I included him. Um, Okui is a bad guy, but I know the Bible says that the heart of a king is in your hand. So I put him also in the list. Um, from my formula, Lord, they are going to, if they give me this, 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 I'll be able to build a poultry farm. And the purpose of building a poultry farm is so I can generate uh, more beds that can. Uh, you know, feed Africa for the next so and so years. But starting from this year, Lord, we are planning to see if we can deliver quality uh, chickens and egg to our back lake. At least we want to touch about give or take 50 families. That's keeping your goal real. You know, guys, Lord, we want to touch Africa in one month because you're a liar. It doesn't work like that, sir. For we walk by faith. We don't jump by faith. Yes, we walk. We walk means plan the go step by step, step by step. Don't jump from A to Z. What is B? What is C? What is D? Hello? Even airplane that is the fastest journey at least takes a process. It moves from an airport, enters the air. Like everything has a process. He said, God, a part of what we want to do after we have established this business is that as we move from door to door supplying our chickens, our, our frozen foods, and eggs, you no know, big eggs, we want to use that as a vehicle to evangelize the gospel. We win souls door to door. Lord, look at your kingdom. God begins to say, this guy is a correct guy. He said, Angel Michael, why are you? No, no, not you. Um, Angel Gabriel, come. Information minister. What? See this guy's budget. Let me see the budget of the kingdom for the next 10 years. He looks. It's okay. We sign off 2% to him. Touch all those men as they are sleeping in the night to give him the money. Put the thing in their dream. Because God sees. When you're there, God, <laughs> when will you give me money for this business? <laughs> I want to die right now, God. Even if your name is Lassisi. Even if your name is uh, Grief Devery. Something just happened right now. I'll be telling God, something just happened right now. Don't say, yeah, yeah, something just happened right now, too. Amen. You see what God did with Noah? I'll show you. He said, make yourself, not even for me, he said, for yourself, an act of, number one, gopher wood, not 
Iroko wood. Gopher wood. Specification of the wood. Make rooms in the ark. And cover it inside and outside with pitch. Go down. Go down. And this is how you shall make it. Hello? Hello? The first, you see the description. The second, you see the steps. He said, and this is how you shall make it. See God. You think it's just, that's why all these your prophets have deceived you. They go and answer my fire. Oh, he will be my God. Answer my fire. Oh. You don't know he also answers by wisdom. He shall be my God. The Lord answered by fire. He shall be my God. You have done that thing. Your suit is losing alignment. Your shoe is fading. Your po- you can't polish shoe. You are still smelling. You see, the Lord answered by fire. He will be my God. Come here and pray. Come here. <laughs> Somebody shout, my father, my father. My- do we do it? We do it. We know the part where you have to bring it for the weapons of our warfare. I not cannot. I know it. I'm not ignorant of the devices of the devil. I know that the weapons of our warfare are not cannot. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. I know them. But I know the path also where you excel by wisdom. So everything you fire and brimstone. There are some you have to you have to sit down and brainstorm. So every day it's fire and brainstorm. There are some that are higher and brainstorm. It's not fire and brainstorm. And this is how you shall make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits. See specification. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits. Its width 50 cubits. And its height 30 cubits. No mistake. God. He can perform magic. I could just draw from heaven. See him talking. The next verse. You shall make a window for the ark. Where do you think that dove was flying in and out from? Window. He already saw dove flying in and out. They make a window. That dove that went and collected that tree. And came back and said that the land is dried now. That tree gave a signal. It's from that window he flew. So God had everything intentionally planned. And then you say you're a Christian. You don't want to function like this. The journey will be too far. And you shall finish it to a cubit from above. And set the door of the ark in his side. Not in front, by the side. You shall make it with lower, second, and third decks. That means there should be third class, second class, and first class apartments in the ark. So Titanic, the day they rose up and said that not even God can sink Titanic. God showed them, I built the biggest ship in the world. It floated on water and sailed through. So Titanic sink. When they finished building it, they said not even God can sink it. God showed them, okay, let's see what happens. So before Titanic built Titanic, God built one. He said, you shall make it with lower. I see, if you watch Titanic, you see that there was a lower class where that guy, Jack, and his poor people, you know, he had to do gamble to even get his ticket. Then you watch, there is the first class compartment where Rose and the fiance and all those queensy and kingly people were. And Jack could not even enter that place. The first day Rose sneaked or smuggled Jack into the first class compartment, he was shocked that there was a place like that in that ship. Because on the lower class, what we were doing there was drinking kunu and ekpetesh. I'm playing gambling and playing, but in that first class, people were having. Who can I use and do that thing? Who can I use? Okay. Come, let's let's try. See what they, you know, they were not dancing all those acrobatic dancing. In that first class, give me your hand. Give me your hand. <laughs> you don't even know how to dance it. <laughs> That's the kind of dance I'll dance in my wedding. You know, you think you bring me to come and do this? Let me hear you play it. Oh, you are who will dance it. My dance is going to be queasy kingly. Glory to God. 
I come for your wedding reception in this church and I see you, don't see. Eh, eh, eh. I just thought, oh no, I walk away. Glory to God. So the day Jack saw that thing for the first time, he was shocked. Eh? So human beings are like this here. Because they were compartment. Look at God built it first. This first class thing we are doing in the plane. First class, business class, economy. God built it first. He said, you shall make it with lower, with second, and with third deck. Decking, that's decking. Not locker, not decks in your class. Decking. Deck it. So that everything we have their own place. Go to verse 17. That's where I ended. He said, and behold, I myself am bringing flood waters on the earth. That means the ark was built before the flood. You don't rescue or remedy a situation when there's a problem. Build the remedy before the problem. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? God built the solution for the problem. That's why the leaders, what those of you are always talking to, hey, watch against water, your gen, your AC, all those things. Do it so that you don't run out of skelter. It's because I have this kind of wisdom. He said, I myself will bring waters on the earth to destroy from heaven all flesh, in which is the breath of life. Everything that is on the earth shall die. Time will fail me to continue on that. Let me take you finally to Solomon's temple. First Chronicles chapter 22, verse 1. Am I wasting your time? I will soon be done. I have exams to take by 2 o'clock. I don't even have time to do my revision. God will help me. Okay, then, okay, that's First Chronicles chapter 22, verse 1. Look at this. Then God said, then David said, this is the house of the Lord God. And this is the altar of burnt offering for Israel. Go down. So David commanded to gather the aliens who were in the land of Israel. And he appointed masons to cut hill stones to build the house of God. Look at verse 3. And David prepared iron in abundance for the nails of the doors of the gates and for the joints and bronze in abundance beyond measure. Go to the next, verse 4. And cedar trees, you see specification again, in abundance for the Sidonians and those from Tyre brought much cedar wood to David. No time to explain this one. It's another subject. Now David said, Solomon my son is young and inexperienced and the house to be built for the Lord must be exceedingly magnificent. So, if you know the size of your dream, you must determine the size of capacity to carry it. If you know the size of your vision, you must determine the size of capacity to build, to carry that vision. Pristine use is a global vision. It's not a local vision. I cannot be local doing a global thing. I have to be global doing a global thing. That's why I'm brushing my head. That's why I'm taking training. So. That's why I spend time training. Oh. That's why it looks like I'm about clicking, but I'm not talking like here. Because this is not where I'm ending. I'm preparing for the world. The world is my stage. He said, and the house to be built for the Lord shall be exceedingly magnificent. So you cannot play with building capacity for that work. The business you want to build how much do you want it to worth after 10 years? A 2 naira investment or a 1 billion dollar investment? Then they started with tiny sugar. The guy who, who, who founded Coca-Cola started with serving and selling Coca-Cola in jugs and cups. But they did not see it ending there. They took it beyond in their mind. The temple has not been built. But David has determined the temple by its capacity. He said it shall be exceedingly magnificent. Famous and glorious throughout all countries. Why David was saying this thing? The temple had not been built. Solomon has not become king. 
and the queen of Sheba has not visited. But David prophesied something when he was not even a prophet. prophet. By predicting through the power of capacity what he said, it shall become magnificent, famous and glorious throughout the country, brought the president of another country to come and see. The queen of Sheba came to Solomon's temple to see what the guy built. And the Bible says she fainted at the gate when she approached. She saw the gatekeeper and life left her. So you see that success is predictable when you have principles at your fingertips. He said that the, fa- the fame and the glory shall spread throughout the country. I will now make preparation for it. That's what he said. After he described all that he needed to do, he said, it's time to sit down. You can't build until you plan. He said, I shall now make preparation for it. If a king who has everything needs to plan, how much more you? So David made abundant preparations before his death. Hi. Somebody didn't hear that. David made abundant preparation before what is that? What happened? Verse 6. We are closing. Then he called for his son Solomon and charged him to build a house for the Lord God of Israel. Verse 7. And David said to Solomon, My son, as for me, it was in my mind to build a house to the name of the Lord my God. Okay, now take me to uh, verse 14. Verse 14 of the same scripture. Indeed, I have taken much trouble to prepare for the house of the Lord. 100,000 talents of gold and 1 million talents of silver and bronze and iron beyond measure for it is so abundant. I have prepared timber and stone also and you may add to them. Yes, 15. Moreover, there are workmen with you in abundance, woodsmen and stone cutters and all types of skillful men for every kind of work. You see how I'm building church. That's why when I see you playing with what I've entrusted in your hands, I know this is not what God told me we are building. You see, David instructing Solomon and he has a clear picture of what he's to do. That's how God instructed me of this vision. I have a clear picture of it. So your confusion cannot confuse me. Your mediocrity can't confuse me. I know it. When I see it, I know it. This is it. If it's not it, I know it's not, it's not it. Moreover, they are, okay, I've done that. 16. Of gold and silver and iron and bronze, there is no limit. Capacity. He said there is no limit. I have prepared. I have prepared. He said, arise and begin walking. And the Lord be with you. The last one, it would have been verse 17. I would have picked something from that, but I will show you. Look at verse 17. Let me pick something, which is different. David also commanded all the leaders of Israel to help Solomon, his son, saying, I won't read the rest. The rest. So you see that even what God has promised you and that you have sat down and built your capacity, there's still need for the cooperation of people to bring it to pass. So after all, he appealed to people, please help my son. The materials are available. He can't do it alone. Help him. So those of you who want to be low rangers, I doff my cap. Glory to God. Glory to God. I've just given you biblical case studies. In contemporary time, there are men who have also excelled tremendously through building tenacious capacity for their field of life. Look at men like Tiger Woods. One of the best golfers. This guy became the best golf player at the age of 21. All over the world, he was reckoned as the best golf player. At the age of 15, he was the best golf teenage player in America. And then one day, some press men came to him and asked, came to the father and asked him, Sir, how did your son become the best golf player at the age of 21? Amazing. And the richest golfer in the world. The father asked them another question to reply to them. He said, if you have a son who started playing golf at the age of two, in, at the age of 21, shouldn't he be the best in that field? He said, he should be. He said, at the age of two, my son took his first best, his first golf shots. At the age of six, I enrolled him in a golf school. And from the age of six to the age of 15, he had practiced and trained and became America's teenage golf player 
at the age of 21 is only needful and right and appropriate that he becomes the world's best golf player. So you see, you cannot beat a man who has capacity. If you like, pray from now to tomorrow. You can't beat Dangote if you don't do what Dangote does. You can't beat Adenuga if you don't do what Adenuga does. These are men who built tremendous, amazing capacity. Tiger like Wood has the ability to find hole anywhere it is hidden. With just his stick, he can trace the hole. He can play the ball in such a way that it goes round and spins back and enters the hole without missing the targets. Why? He has built an, un- un- an amazing and unimaginable capacity. Such that his equals can't even beat. Can I talk to you about people like Celine Dion? Celine Dion, you know her, a secular lady. A lot of you know her. You may wonder why is someone talking about Celine Dion? When she was still in the music industry actively, she was one time the best secular music uh, uh, artist in the world. Everybody knows about Celine Dion. Everybody knows her for her amazing skills, her amazing voice. Her amazing pitch. Her voice is so fine-tuned. You dare not hear a crack when she sings. You know the secret they asked her one time. How are you so good at pitching keys? Pitching in such a way that people cannot even dare to pitch. One time they said the lady was able to pitch and exceeded the highest octave on any keyboard. A keyboard of seven octaves. They said at the time they traced Celine Dion's pitch to ninth octave. Have you played a ninth octave keyboard in your life? What was the highest you've played? Seven octave. The lady pitched and exceeded keyboard octave and pitched up to the ninth octave. No keyboard has been able to manufacture that. And they say, what is the secret? The secret is that Celine Dion would spend 18 solid hours every day rehearsing in the studio. Not once a week. Every day, 18 hours, you call Celine Dion. Come and eat. She will refuse to eat. What was she doing as a baby at the age of 14? Rehearsing. Can I talk to you about another guy called Bill Gates? Bill Gates at the age of 12 was found one time in the mother's drone. He said at the age of 12, he was very fond of hiding in the mother's drum. He would wake up and then while others are playing, he would go into the drum and hide himself. One day the mother looked for him. Bill, 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 where are you? They kept searching for Bill. They couldn't find Bill Gates. And they searched until evening. The mother came out again and screamed and was calling and was crying. Bill raised his head from the drum, very close to where the mother was. Little did the mother know that Bill was in the drum. Bill raised his head out of the drum and said, Mommy, why are you shouting my name? Don't you think? You are interrupting my thinking. I've been thinking since morning. Don't you have time to think? What was he doing at the age of 12? Thinking. Thinking. He was thinking. He was thinking. If your life will not stink, think. If you don't want your life to sink, think. He was thinking at the age of 12. What was he thinking about? How he can become a big gate that will assess the bills of nations. How he will become a gate that will assess the bills of nations. That's why he's called Bill Gates. And these men are billionaires in dollars. Human beings like you, when you hear them, they tell you the price they paid to be who they are. They didn't just fall from the tree. Most of them don't carry the Bible you carry. Time will fail me. I could go into biographies right now of men who have turned the world upside down by engaging the instrumentality, the instrumentality of capacity building. Nothing will change in your life until you enlarge your coasts. You will have no new supply in your life until you break this old mold and increase your tent. How to increase capacity because of time. Tap into the power of thoughts. Tap into the power of your mind. Tap into the power of thinking. It's time to stop worrying and switch to thinking. It's time to stop lazing and start thinking. In Africa, we don't have a reputation for thinking. We think thinking is bad market. My friend, listen to me. The only way to alter the condition of your mind is to alter it through the power of thoughts. 
The only way to alter the condition of your life is to alter it to the power of thoughts. A man who does not think will stink. A man who does not think cannot be relevant in this age. That's what the Bible says. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. That means your life improves on the basis of the thoughts in your mind. Your life improves on the basis of the quality of thoughts that emanates from your mind. As a man thinks, so he is. The Bible means that you are not different from your thoughts. Your thought is equal to you. Engage the instrumentality of thoughts. Sit down and think. 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 Can I show you seven ways to succeed in life? If I have the opportunity of showing you, I will tell you number one, think. Number two, think. Number three, think. Number four, think. Number five, think. Number six, think. And number seven, think. Africans don't think. Africans don't think. We have an environment that is saturated with noise. People don't have time to think. Timaya is blowing your roof upside down. Whiskey is blowing your bedroom upside down. Um, face to face is throwing you off balance. Facebook has already caused you another confusion. WhatsApp is taking your time and your energy. Social media is ruining your life. You no longer have time to sit down and think. Thinking leads to planning. Thinking needs to go leads to goal setting. Thinking. Thinking. How many of you think? How many of you can measure? The time you invest in thinking. Thinking about your ministry. Thinking about your assignment in life. Thinking about your career. Thinking about your job. Thinking about something to offer the world. Think. Engage the power of your thoughts. Engage the power of your mind. That's one way to increase capacity. Sit down. Catch that dream. Sit down on it and think. 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 Hey my friend. Become a think tank. Become a think tank. Become a think tank. Become a tank so full of thoughts. The raw material for ideas are thoughts. For God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, okay, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was a void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. The face of the deep. And what has covered the earth? The face of the deep is not the earth. The face of the deep is God's mind. Darkness covered it. He could not think anything. If your mind is dark, your world is dark. If your mind is empty, your word is empty. If your mind is full, your word is full. You do not mind resources on the surface of the earth. You mind resources in the deep of the earth. Gold is not picked on the surface of the earth. You pick gold from where? From the depth of the earth. It's called the deep, the deep, the deep, the deep, the deep. It's the deep. You don't pick diamonds on the street. You have to dig deep. If you want to build a well, you don't pick water from the from the ground. You have to drill. You have to drill the borehole. The thing has to drive inside. It will shatter those rocks. It will shatter those stones. It will shatter those concrete beneath the earth crust. It will keep breaking. Sometimes it will get to a point. It will be so hard. The heat will be vibrating. But it's still breaking. It's still breaking. It will break through and get to a point it cannot help the water will burst out. There are things holding the resources inside of you from bursting out. The drilling machine for getting them is the power of thoughts. That's why the Bible says that darkness cover the face of the deep. You don't get treasures in shallow places. You get them in the deep. The world was in God's mind. The earth was in God's mind. The heavens was in God's mind. The cattle was in God's mind. The mountains, the mountains rather, was in God's mind. But darkness covered. And God said, let light come on this mind. That light he built was not sun. It was the light of illumination. The light of knowledge. The light of thoughts. He ignited the light of thoughts when he started thinking. Darkness appeared. Then he saw the world inside him. He saw the heavens inside him. He saw the earth inside him. He saw the mountains inside him. He saw the rivers inside him. And God said, Let there be sun. Mm, the thing came out. Let there be mountain. The thing came out. Let there be this. The thing came out. That's why your success equation begins from thoughts. Your thought leads to wars. Your wars leads to action. Your action forms your habit. Your habit forms your character. Your character places your destiny. You cannot speak until you think. It is what you speak you act on. 
Your action over time culminates into your habit. Your habit grows into your character. Your character fixes your destiny. Tap into the power of thoughts. Like Bill Gates, think. Like Steve Jobs, think. Like Warren Buffett, think. Like Thomas Edison, think. Like Michael Faraday, think. Think. If I were you, get a room in your house and put it think tank. You should have quiet time for just thinking, not talking. Some of you talk, 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 talk. No think, 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 think. Cover out time. Just lie down like you don't know what you're doing. Be thinking. Create your, a picture of your future in your mind. Paint it, paint it, paint it. Get those brush and begin to paint. Paint the mountainous dreams of your life. Paint the pictures of your future. Paint the desired and preferred destination you want to get to. Paint that company in your mind. Paint that business in your mind. Paint that investment in your mind. Paint that ministry in your mind. There's one thing you can't take away from me. You can take my suit. You can take my tie. You can take my shoe. You can take my wristwatch. You can't take the picture of this ministry from me. You cannot. I've painted it. Anybody can walk away from me. One thing cannot leave me. The vision I hold tenaciously to. I've painted it. Paint your future in such a way artists will wonder. Oh, no, no, no. I said, paint your future in such a way that artists will wonder. When artists see your future, they wonder. Some of you don't think. That's why you're not motivated. If I'm in this church right now, I can't sit down again. If these words are coming from some other person, no, 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 I can't sit down. You know why? Because I've painted it. So when the man is talking, I know. No matter what I say to you, if you are empty inside of you, you will not be able to understand anything. A man who is motivated is a man who, who has something to be motivated about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you hear what I said? I said, a man who is dead, who is motivated, is somebody who has something to be motivated about. If there's nothing to be motivated about, no motivational talk will make you motiv- get motivated. When I say in a meeting like this and you're talking, the, the vision of me becomes pregnant. I still seen priestly here afresh. I still seen you in Nigeria. I still seen everything afresh. It's in, in, in the lodges. When you give food to a man who is not hungry, you're wasting your time. Give food to a hungry man, he will jump around it. He will devour the food. Uh, can we get back? Number two, don't undermine the potency of training. Hmm. Time will fail me to read about Moses. Moses was in the wilderness 40 days, 40 years, training. When he left Egypt, training, training, training. God was training him because he was going to lead the nation out of Egypt. What about David in the bush? Training, 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 playing the halves and the guitar, taking care of the fellowship. He was learning how to be a leader of a nation. He was learning how to be a leader over a nation. What about Joseph in the prison? What was happening to him? Training. You must know how to lock yourself in places where only you knows about and train yourself. Engage in personal development. Attend seminars. Attend schools. Attend workshop. Train. Number three, for the want of time. Mentorship always pays. Mentorship always pay. You want to increase capacity? Who is your mentor? Who speaks into your life? Who corrects you when you go wrong? Who holds you accountable? Who disciplines you? Who chastises you? A general who wants to become a general understands he needs multiple stars to be decorated with multiple stars. If you want to be a general, you need multiple scars to be decorated with multiple stars. You see all these people who are running away from mentorship watch their life. I don't struggle with them. Now you're the threat, not with me. I don't struggle with you. Now your account, they're broke, not with me. I know they struggle with you. I have a mentor over my life. He knows me. Claim or anybody is your mentor. If he doesn't know you, you're wasting your time. I have a mentor. I have a one-on-one relationship with him. He speaks to me. He doesn't only speak. He spanks me. He spanks me. When I get it wrong, he spanks me. He that the father loves, he chastises. 
Eh? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pasture. He makes me. He leads me inside still waters. He restored my soul. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for the Lord is with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Not it comforts me. So you don't have a choice. You don't choose. It is said, thy rod and thy staff, it. So you don't say it's only staff that comforts. It's a both rod, discipline, and staff, love, they comfort. So the man shows you care, be comforted. He shows you blala, discipline, be comforted. They comfort. That's what mentorship does. Then he restored my soul. If you don't have a mentor, you are going to end up in the hands of tormentors. You don't have a mentor, my friend, you are going nowhere. That's what the youths of this age lack. Mentors. Men who can hold them accountable. They are running everywhere. They are dodging discipline. They don't want to be uh, caught red-handed in their acts, in their disobedience. They want to be men on their own. See where you are. They see where I am. See what the process is doing to me. The next verse. Okay. Sorry. The next point. So mentorship pays. That's point three. There are only seven I'm showing you. Number four. Reading never gets obsolete. Reading. Reading never gets obsolete. If you want to know about that, read Daniel. You will see what the Bible says about that in the book of Daniel chapter 2. And I, Daniel, understood by books. By books. How many of you have a furnished library? How many of you have a furnished library? If you don't have a library stocked with books, you are going nowhere, my friend. How many of you read? Africa's problem is ignorance. Africa's problem is that they don't read. Africa's problem is that they don't pay the price to open the pages of books. Everything you are looking for in life is hidden in the pages of books. A white man once said, if you want to hide anything from an African man, hide it in the pages of books. You know why? He will never go there to find it. You hide it perpetually. Especially in this part of the world. People who don't read. If they are in school, they only read their textbooks to pass exams, not to develop themselves. Buy books. Stop buying too much of ice cream. Stop buying books. Value books. Value reading. Read a book, at least one book every week. No matter how small, read something. Read something. Read something on stock. Read something on investment. Read something on the benches. Read something. Read something. Read something. Read something. Read something on dressing. Read something on anything. As long as it's a good book, read it. Avoid erotic books. Avoid books that, that only increases your hormones. That makes you feel gushy rushy. Go for books that educate your mind. Don't care what you're reading in school or what you are practicing as a career person. You should be versatile. Read something. Be multi-learned. Like your pastor is. All around that. Read it never gets obsolete. Because of them, I'm rushing this. Number five, prayers. Your one sure gas station. Prayers. Your one sure gas station is your fueling station. Your filling station. You want to build capacity? Hey, pray, pray, pray. There are giants you can't knock off with just reading. You'll knock them off in the spirit. Pray. There are some things limiting you from becoming who you are meant to be. Prayers will knock it out. There are books you read that can't handle some of the things handling your destiny. When you pray, it handles it. Men who don't pray become a prey for the devil to play with. Men who don't pray becomes a prey for the devil to play with. To play with. Prayer! Your one sure gas station. You want to fuel your life. You want to build your life. You want to expand your capacity. Both in the spirit and in the physical. Prayer is a secret. Pray, pray, pray. The devil fears men who pray. One sure way to expand yourself and carry weight is to pray. I see a prayerless man I know. He is paperweight. I see a prayerless man I know. He's full of fear. He never believes anything can happen with his life. He is full of impossibility. Like Joshua and Caleb, I have a different spirit. I see mountain, I go and collect. I see stadium, I go and collect. I know the stadium can be full on my behalf. I don't fear nothing. I dare, I take big steps. A prayerless man is an empty man. A prayerless man is a very fragile man. It's just paperweight. Anything can blow it. It's like a chaff. 
That's why you have never given God your first 100,000. Because you have not built capacity to give. Inside of you is emptiness, limi- li- limitation. Number six, giving does wonders. Hello? If you want to live a particular level of your life, especially your finances, I'll give that level. Give out that level. <laughs> if you are operating at the one million level, give one million, you will move to the next level. You can't remain at the same level you've given out. Hey, uh, if you are operating at the 100,000 level, give that 100,000. You move to 200,000. You cannot remain at the level you gave out. I don't have time to talk on giving, but just take it as a point. Go and study my tapes on these subjects. Prayers, giving, and all that. You will learn more. Some people are where they are because of their greed. They can't give. The day I bought that lister outside there, what millions of naira the day i bought it i knew i had conquered the fear of undertaking any gigantic project i knew it you know why i give him myself to a point where i don't see those things as money again when i first gave my one million i conquered the fear of money i know I, me can give what let, let me tell you something you don't measure a man's wealth by what he keeps. You measure a man's wealth by what he gives. Hello. Not by what he keeps. Anything you can't give is bigger than you. Anything you cannot give away, bigger than you. He is bigger than you. He want to... Hey, I can talk about this forever. Let's leave it. Give him those wonders. John chapter 6 verse 1. You can read that on your time. You see the power that is tied to giving. There's enormous power tied to giving. That's the same scripture we read on Jesus turning the five loaves of bread and two fishes and multiplied it. The guy who gave it was the one who went home with the twelve baskets. You cannot give five loaves and two fishes and not go home with twelve baskets full. Not possible. Show you that next time. Finally, practice this practice now is not training. This practice is engage in engage in something. Do something. Take steps. Just do it. Do something. Do something. Let me tell you something. Life does not give way for people who stay too long in their thought world. Life only gives way for people who take steps. I don't care how much you think. If you don't take steps, you unction your thoughts. The thoughts will not produce anything if you don't take steps. And let me tell you one thing about taking steps and doing something. See this. One of the first things you meet is failure. Failure is not a disaster. Failure is a learning process. Hmm? Can I show you the formula of practice I developed? I call it the flow formula. F-L-U-R-W. The flow formula. The flow formula of practice or action is number one. Fail. When you practice, you fail. You don't succeed. You what? Fail. I say failing is a learning process. There is dignity in failure. Failure is the other side of success. Mm, you didn't hear what I said. It's just like the two sides of a coin. Is the other side of success. Any success without failure is questionable. It's suspicious. Can I say that again? Any success without failure is suspicious. Suspected. Suspected. Because God designs you to succeed through the path of failure. Because there are things you will never learn until you fail. That leads to the next stage. Learn. Failure leads to learning. Can I tell you about a man called Thomas Edison? He invented the electric bulb 1,000 times and failed. At the 1,000th time, he got it. They asked him, why did you fail for 1,000 times? He said, hey, I did not fail 1,000 times. I learned 1,000 ways the electric bulb cannot be invented. Failure is a learning process. Can I talk to you about Abraham Lincoln? 
the man canvassed for presidency of America a couple of times and couldn't win. He went for Congress a couple of times and couldn't win. He went for different positions in America and couldn't win. And uh, the man did not only, he suffered the demise of his wife. Severally, he suffered nervous breakdown. The man went through untold hardship. But one day came, he finally saw himself in the White House. Failure is not denial. Failure is not truly failing. It is staying where you fail that is actual failure. I can go on and on and talk to you about men who have made history. You can't talk about any of them without talking about their failures. Nelson Mandela, Obama, Martin Luther King. He said, I have a dream that one day, he didn't live to see it come to pass, but it finally came to pass. Failure. When you practice, you make mistakes and then you make adjustments. That's where you learn. That's why failing is important. If you want to teach a man faster, let him do the job and fail. He will learn how to fail. Learn. Number three formula is unlearn. So when you fail, failing gives you the opportunity to unlearn what made you fail. You know, okay, this one plus one is not giving me ten. I've been doing one plus one. I need to do 5 plus 5 to get 10. You will learn something that has not been working. Number 4. You relearn. That's the R formula. You relearn. When you unlearn, replace that thing you, 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 you unlearn with something new. Relearn. And then number 5. You win. You win. You win. Win. That's W. Win. 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 So fail, learn, unlearn, relearn, then you can win. That's why practice is important. Before I leave this podium, I want three men here. Three men. I want to give the gift of apples. Three men. Come, my sister. Come. You to come. Okay. Thank you for volunteering. Come. You have the opportunity of taking one apple. Come, come. Take apple. Take apple. Quickly. I'll give. Okay. Anyone you want, you can take. No, no, no. Come. Just call it. Who is the other person I called? Um, come and take quickly. Face them. Don't be afraid. We are going to eat apple today. Come and stand here and behave like somebody who is going somewhere to apple. Go, no, stand up. I want them to see you. You have three powerful people standing before you. Everybody watch. Now, you're going to take this apple. You have one opportunity to just take one bite. One opportunity. You will eat twice. You eat once and drop it. At the count of three, you take your bite. One, two, three. Okay. 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 Let's look at the apples. Face it. Let's see. Let's see. Hello. Watch. Let's assess their bites. Let's watch. Do you know this? My friend took the biggest apple. He took the biggest apple. But let's watch his bite. One opportunity. See what he collected. Let's watch our own. Show us. Show us. No, keep your apple. Let's see it. See a whole apple. If you have an opportunity to maximize your life on a one stop shot. The question you should ask, the question I should ask you guys, is this the much you can bite? If you have one opportunity to make a bite out of your destiny, is this what it, the question is, what happens to the rest left untouched? Can you see that what they beat does not compare to what is left? There is still much. Can I give you a message? 
there is still more to you on tapped that has been tapped. There is still more to you mind or mind that has been mined. There is still more to you than you currently know. If you have the opportunity of taking a bite of your destiny, is this how much you can do? How high you would fly determines is determined by how much you are willing to bounce. If you get two balls, I wish I came with them. Pump one with air. The same ball, the same color. Bounce it. It flies high. You get another one, leak air out of it. Bounce it. It stays on the ground. What takes you high is what you put inside of you. Your capacity is the only way you can rule cities. Rise on your feet. You can drop your apples or go with your apples. God bless you. It's your apples. Rise on your feet. Talk to God if you want to. Talk to God if you want to. Talk to God if you want to. Just do that quickly. We don't have all the time. We're closing the service. I have an exam to attend. We believe you've been transformed by the wonders of God's word. For additional information about us, you can visit our website at www.princetonhills.org. You can also send us a mail at info at princetonhills.org or call 070-331-66762 or 081-31-555-747. Princeton Hills Ministries. Raising Global Raising Leaders. Global Leaders.